The third and final type of combat you can have in naval combat is a submarine combat. And this requires you to have submarines and your opponent to have convoy points present in the sea zone in order for you to select this option. It's going to work exactly like a uh, surface combat with the following exceptions. The sub player is going to include only their submarines when it comes to um, calculating attack factors, and you're going to use the sub and ASW line of the naval combat chart rather than the surface, anti-air and surface. The non-sub side is only going to include units in the zero box, and you are going to calculate their ASW factors, which is found on a chart in the rule book on page 29, as well as a table which is printed directly on the European map here in the upper left hand corner. And you can see the ASW factors depends on the type of naval unit that you're looking at. So all battleships, which would be naval surface naval units, SCSs, surface combat ships, with a first cycle cost of two are considered battleships. Aircraft carriers, we know what they look like. Heavy cruisers are surface combat ships with a first cycle cost of one and with a black silhouette on the back of the counter, such as this black silhouette for HMS Mauritius. And a light cruiser is a surface combat ship with a first cycle cost of one but the silhouette is gray rather than black. And I believe you may only find the light cruisers in the Ships in Flames expansion. Although I could be mistaken because I think there are uh, at least a few uh, whiff uh, classic counters. So gray versus black determines whether it's a heavy cruiser or a light cruiser. You can see also that for every full five convoy points, you will also receive some ASW factors. Now, in this case, the Commonwealth, in the example we're showing here, have two heavy cruisers and 15 convoy points. So in calculating the ASW value, you're going to come back up to this chart, and we see that for every full five convoy points in 1941 or earlier, we will get an one ASW factor. The next column is 1941, 1942, and then from 1943 and later. Now, assuming this is a 1940 combat, the Commonwealth is going to receive three ASW factors from the 15 convoy points she has, and from the heavy cruisers, since we're using just the classic now, we'll look at the whiff row, and we will also receive one from each of the two cruisers, giving us a total of five ASW. Now, if you're using the options, the ships in flames option number five or the light cruisers in flames option six, that's going to change the value, the ASW value of various ships you have. But since we're looking at this purely uh, as a classic example at this point, the, AS, the ASW value of the Commonwealth ships involved in this round of the combat is going to be five. The Germans have included the three and four section of the sea box in this battle where they have a total of three submarines. So when the Commonwealth makes an attack against the submarines, they are going to use the sub and ASW row. They are going to be on the four to five column and they are shooting at three submarines, which is going to give us a result of one damaged and two abort that would be applied to the German submarines. The German submarines have a total of three, four, seven sub-factors. They will be shooting at one, two, and remember each five convoy points is equal to one ship, so we have three ships worth of convoy points plus two actual ships gives us a total of five enemy ships, and we cross-reference that against seven ASW factors, that puts us on the six to seven column, five enemy ships. You see we get zero destroyed, two damage, and three abort. 
Now, how do we implement those? In a submarine combat, every odd result needs to be implemented against convoy points. So in other words, the first result, the third result, the fifth result must be applied against uh, convoy points. The owner gets to choose where to apply the even results, second, fourth, etc. So looking at the results the submarines obtained, they obtained two damage and three aborts. So the first results we have to implement are going to be both damage results. The first damage result must go against a convoy point. You can see, if I zoom in here, get a little closer, you can see that the defense value of convoy points is 10, which means you don't have to roll because it's impossible to roll greater than 10, which means any result applied to a convoy point will never be downgraded. So the first result is a damage. That means five convoy points here are going to be damaged. The second result is a damage, and the uh, Commonwealth, in an effort to try to save some of its convoy points, decides to apply it to the Newcastle. If Newcastle rolls a six or less, it will be damaged, which it is. So this is now damaged. And we now have three abort results. The third result overall and the first abort result must go against one of the convoy points. So we now have five convoy points that are going to be aborted. The Commonwealth decides to attempt to abort the Mauritius for the fourth result. They roll a two. Mauritius is now aborted. And we have one last result to apply. It is an abort, which goes on the remaining five convoy points here. So the German submarines were able to damage five convoy points. These will go into the repair pool and the Commonwealth will need to repair them. These 10 convoy points will abort immediately to port along with the uh, Newcastle and the Mauritius. When they go back to port, the Germans then with that one round of submarine combat have managed to basically empty the sea zone of Commonwealth convoy points. If the Commonwealth does not have some convoy points nearby that they can move into the sea zone, they stand a chance of seeing their production greatly disrupted in the upcoming production phase. Now on the flip side, shooting back at the submarines, we had five ASW factors shooting at three submarines. That's one damage and two abort. So the German player, since it's resolved similarly to a surface combat, would choose how to apply those uh, results. They will choose their worst submarine to suffer the damage result. And since it's a 10, that's going to automatically be applied. And so this Type 2B submarine will be damaged. When it, re uh, when it returns to base at the end of this naval combat, it will then go into the repair pool. The other two submarines each suffer one of the abort results. So the Type 9, or we'll go with the Type 9C with a uh, defense value of 8. The Germans roll an 8, which means they are aborted. They will be turned face down. And then lastly, they roll a 2, which will also abort the Type 9. So for the Germans, they have one submarine damaged and two that are aborted and returned to base. Final result of that particular round of submarine combat is five convoy points damaged for the Commonwealth, one German submarine damaged, two aborted, and the remainder aborted. Overall, that's probably a pretty good trade-off for the Germans. Now, after implementing the results from whatever type of combat you've done, both sides then have the opportunity to decide whether they are going to remain in the sea zone or whether they are going to voluntarily abort all of their remaining units from that sea zone. And remember, if you do decide to abort, it's all of your units out there, even ones that were not involved in the naval combat. So it's a big decision to make. You would then, if both sides still have units remaining in the sea zone, you simply repeat the process starting at the point where both sides have an opportunity to commit uh, aircraft to the, uh, to the sea zone. Uh, and then you would announce sub-commitment, go on to make your search rolls, etc. That's going to continue round after round until either both sides fail their search rolls or one side 
is the only side with any units remaining, either because the opponents were all sunk or aborted, or one side decided to voluntarily abort. And as you can see from the length of this video, naval combat is one of the more involved processes in World in Flames, but do not be intimidated by that. Uh, you will find that as you start to resolve some of these combats on your own, you're going to get a feeling for how they work. You're going to get into the flow of it. You'll get used to reading the naval combat chart. The nice thing is, whether you're doing a submarine combat, a surface combat, or a naval air combat, the chart works the same way. Results are implemented in the same way. You're making those rules against the defense values of the uh, particular units. So it's just learning the, the, the little differences between the surface and naval air and, and submarine combats themselves, which will come in time. Um, you should be able to start resolving most of your naval combats in a pretty reasonable amount of time. Uh, the one exception might be where you have a couple of large fleets fighting it out, uh, say the Japanese uh, main fleet versus a large American fleet in the Pacific. However, those fights are some of the most exciting and unpredictable combats that you are going to have in the game. And so from that perspective, even though they may take a little while to work through, it's kind of a fun process. It's real enjoyable to see what uh, happens. I guess I should say it's probably more fun for those players not directly involved watching what happens than those who uh, are risking their navies. But uh, at any event, uh, the naval combat in WIF is, uh, again, one of the more unpredictable and uh, can be pretty entertaining parts of the game. From here, we have pretty much wrapped up all of the action stage rules that we need to cover, and we'll be moving into the end of turn stage with our next episode. Uh, there will probably be another five episodes or so, I think, to get through all of those rules. And then I'll start in uh, on covering the optional rules. So we're starting to get into the home stretch here on this tutorial series. I want to thank you again for watching not just today, but all of the other videos. Again, if you have any questions, if there's anything that I may have missed or uh, you're a little unclear about, please put it in the comments. Don't forget to click like. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of the future content. That's going to wrap it up for today. Take care, and we'll see you next time.